Okay, there, sure. we're live. Right. there we go. I don't know what happened to that connection there. It went all wonky. Hopefully that's not a sign of things to come. Yeah, what are you with Bell or something? No. No? Oh. It would have made sense if I was yeah. with Bell. That's a, that's a Bell problem. <laughs> you gotta get Rogers, pal. That's it. Ro Rogers has less interruption. Yep. Is that what you're saying? That's what I found. Well, I, uh, I'm in with wind, and I find I get service interruption all the time. With it's terrible. Wind with uh, home internet? No, actually my home internet is uh, tech savvy. Tech savvy. Right? Actually, you know what? They use the bell line. Yeah. We're on the they bell line with uh, the tech DSL, right? Yeah. Yeah. DSL. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they, uh, they have cable and, uh, and DSL, but... Uh, we're just using the DSL, and it's pretty good. I mean, they give us, I think we're at like 400 gigs or something like that uh, a month. We never we never touch it, and we use the Android box all the time. Um, and plus with the PlayStation, it loads constantly. Um, updates are crazy on there, because it's like 3 gigs, 10 gigs, like all the updates are just super nuts. Um, yeah, it's been doing us pretty well. I mean, we don't really get service interruptions. 400 gig. What's the cap with Rogers? We have we were with Rogers. What cap was? No, I don't. I don't, I don't remember. I don't think we was... just used to just get like unlimited internet. Oh, we ah, man, I get charged for it all the time. I don't think the cap was very high. No, maybe 250 gig, one 250 gig. Yeah, something like that. There is an option for an unlimited too. Yeah, like, hey, you gotta pay for extra big dog, oh, man. It's so expensive. Oh well, one day uh, it'll all be free. It's true. One day it'll all be free. Well, we gotta, hey, we day. gotta ask people uh, in the chat room if they can hear if they can hear us talking clearly. Yeah, we had that problem at yeah. uh, at, at the vape convention there. But yeah, uh, we're having sound problems. Maybe we can invest in a, a microphone or something. I don't know if we can hook, can we hook a microphone up to a phone? Shh. Let's see. I'd like to find a way to get a camera that would stream live to Facebook without having to use my phone. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah. But if you hook a microphone up to your phone and then ran a cable, I don't know, maybe that would work. No, we'll look into that. Maybe there'll be a microphone we can use. Yeah. Are you even vape, bro? Huh. Yeah, vaping. We had our vaping special earlier there, Greg. Yeah. Uh, we'll, do, we'll do a recap, actually. We were, we were planning on doing a recap, just a quick one. We didn't want to touch on the vaping uh, all night because we did a vaping episode today. Um, but what we came up with, uh, we had an idea of uh, we started off with uh, your favorite vape. Your favorite, we, we went around and tested all the flavors and stuff. So you guys see us walk around, we, didn't, we, we tested a lot. Uh, so what was your favorite today? Favorite vape was, uh, you're probably going to say the same thing, was Seven Monks. Seven Monks. Uh, in, the Enlightenment, which is the same one yeah. you like, you got it I right bought there. It. I bought it. Seven, uh, seven Monks Enlightenment comes yeah. in a cool box. Comes in a little box. That's uh, lime and mostly lime flavor, right? There was there was something else in there with it, but it was lime. Uh, I was looking for a really good lime today. Yeah. And. When I found this, it was uh, it was fantastic, and then we tried the rest of the line too. Really good, and yeah. everything was great. He gave us some samples and stuff. I was really enjoying it. Uh, so check out that if you're vaping. Seven monks. They're out of Quebec. Seven um, monks. What was another good one? I don't know. There was a lot of good flavors actually. Well, versus E Juice launched uh, two flavors today as we talked about Aries yeah. and uh, Glamazon. Yep, those um, are good. I've been vaping those all night. Uh, I've actually been vaping Aries tonight, and uh, thank you to my assistant for throwing me some uh, props here, Aries and uh, Glamazon. Yeah, it's, it's funny, we both had the same uh, yeah. flavor after all the stuff we tried today. Really, really, really good. good. Really strong, really good. Effect. Now, the other thing is, when you go to these conventions, there's always deals. Uh, like, I mean, like, for example, Versus had a great deal. Normally the 30 bot the 30 milliliter bottles are 18 on their website, plus you're gonna pay shipping and stuff, right? But at the convention, 
it was fifteen dollars a bottle, so you get a discount. And then if you bought any bottle after first bottle, it was ten dollars a bottle. Yeah, that's a great deal. So you get like two bottles for twenty five bucks. Yeah. that's less than the cost of a bottle to ship to you. Yeah, but they they have all these companies with different uh, uh, discounts. What did you find uh, your your the favorite best, discount was? The best deal I got. Uh, e juice was from app, an aptly named company Bargain E juice, which has the most simple label ever. And here it is, right here. This is or an orange flavor, but the thing is that this is 120 milliliters, and this was only $15. $15? Yeah, for 120. That's a good bargain. Which, uh, I mean, normally you get bottles of 30 mils, and they're like 10. The best deal was ten bucks. Mm -hmm. Another place had three for ten, which is a really good deal. But this was definitely the best deal. 120 mils, which is a ton. Mm -hmm. That is a ton of juice. Other, uh, that's that was fantastic. I actually tried that juice as well. It was really good, and for the price, it was amazing. Um, the other, the other juice that uh, I thought had a really good deal today was U-Turn. Yep. Uh, they were doing, doing three 30 mil bottles for $10. That that essentially is like buying one, getting two free. Yeah, that was a really good deal. It's a great deal, and they launched a new ju a new juice. We we had them actually on the show just really quickly. We were they were the ones that were eating the churros today. We we had the yeah. churros there, the churros, yeah. and because they were launched, they launched a new juice uh, that was like a cinnamon churro. It wasn't too bad. But yeah, that's our recap from uh, from Juice Jam 2016. Uh, we had some great features on the episode earlier, uh, where we had Chris from Versus E Juice and we had Rob from 416 Vapes. Uh, both, in my mind, like I mean, there's great deals and there's great uh, flavors, uh, but then you, you always have your personal favorites, and my personal favorites are always Versus and 416. Mm -hmm. So that's why I wanted to feature both of those gentlemen today. Um, both amazing creators of juice. Uh, they have great minds when it comes to flavor. Yeah, they make really good stuff. Really good uh, product. Yeah, really good product. Uh, completely. But we'll move on uh, from the vape because I don't want to be a full vape episode. Um, we were actually going to... Yeah, speak, sorry. Uh, I was going to say, speaking of moving on from vaping, <laughs> I think we want to move on from different other, a couple other topics too as well. Yeah, we, we've decided, uh, it's not that we don't want to talk about it ever, but we've had a lot of filled episodes with uh, talk about like WWE and UFC. Uh, we we both have love for respective genres and stuff, but uh, we don't want to make every episode about that. So we'll, we'll uh, maybe when something big happens in that, we'll, we'll come back to it, but we're gonna try to spice it up with some other stuff. Yeah, for now it's, uh, we'll call it a hiatus. Actually, uh, I had a question here, how was the trip to New York? The trip to New York was was absolutely amazing. It, it was almost a shame that it was only a day trip. Um, but yeah, at the same time, being spontaneous and just doing a road trip somewhere to a big city like that was a lot of fun. Uh, walked around downtown New York for five hours yesterday and then drove home. We saw so many things and yet there was so probably tenfold that of that I didn't see. I'd love to go back and do it again. Uh, so who knows, maybe we'll do an episode one day of uh, the Ultimate Gravity Show from Times Square. That'd be pretty big. That'd be pretty cool. Maybe. We'll travel around. Maybe we could come to your city. Sure. Yep. Take that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, coming for you. We're coming for you, Hoboken. Uh, uh, Hoboken. What's your Hoboken? We're coming for you, uh, Grand Rapids. Is, that's on your list? Like, all the places you want to go, you're like, Grand Rapids, Michigan. That's right. That's where I want to do an episode. That's right. That's right. All right. All right. I was going to say something like maybe Boston or something. Boston? Well, I guess. Boston. Yeah. I don't know. It's not it's Grand Rapids, but yeah, yes. I, guess. I, I suppose. suppose. <laughs> uh, coming for you. Hey, Battle Creek, Michigan. <laughs> Battle Creek. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Coming for you. You know, actually, one thing Battle Creek's the home of cereal factories. That's where they make all the That's cereals? where they make the cereals. I think 
Kellogg's estate is headquartered there. They make uh, cereals of all kinds. Battle Creek, Michigan. Famous for cereals. So if you're looking for something to do, you could probably go to the battlefield and tour cereal plants. Yeah, Battle Creek. Battle, that's where I said it. Battle Creek. <laughs> Battlefields, you want to go to like Gettysburg or something like that. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Gettysburg. Gettysburg. They don't make cereal there, but they do battles. A lot of people died. Yep. More than 10. Yep. More than 10. I don't know what that has to do with cereal, but I, lots of people died at Gettysburg. Lots of people. Hey, remember that, remember that episode a couple of, uh, it was last week? I, I see if everybody else remembers. We said we were going to do uh, five of your rules. My own personal rules. You had like a rule that you spit out on us. <clears throat> You're like, yeah, this yeah. is my personal rule. I don't do this. And then uh, I was like, you know what? That's great. Let's find out what uh, some, maybe they're not your top five, but some, like, give us five of your rules. Right, so that the seem to be interesting. The first rule was, uh, I was basically, I'm not a trained monkey, so I don't, I don't do, uh, I don't, uh, disrespect myself for the laugh, mm -hmm. or do something stupid just for a laugh. Um, yeah, that was one of my own personal rules, but I guess... Um, other rules that I follow, I mean, it's, I have a whole bunch, but I'm trying to think what are some good ones that, uh, that I follow. Um, I guess, uh, I guess, uh, let's see, the social group, I usually, I, I don't want to be known as either the drunk guy or the weird guy. <laughs> Neither one of those things in a social group is, is any good at all. You don't want to be known. Funny guy, cool guy, that's good. Um, I don't know, of course, sexy guy. I don't think I've ever been known as a sexy guy, though. You might have been today. <laughs> I might have been today. That's a whole other story. Thanks for reminding me. But uh, maybe we'll get into that later. Yeah, I don't speaking know of the, that, the, I the party labels. I'm pretty sure quite often I get known as the drunk guy. Do you? Yeah, I'm, always, I'm the drunk guy, but but maybe I'm the drunk funny guy. Maybe. Maybe. You know, uh, actually, Leslie from today said they named uh, our friend Stripper Fella. Awesome. Yep, Stripper Fella. She was think, a peach. I don't think it was a guy. I, I'm pretty sure it was a girl. I mean, I was pretty close to her, so... You were close to her, or she was close to you? Uh, there were, there was, uh, uh, yeah, pretty close. It was pretty so, close. for those of you who don't know the story today, uh, we, like, we, it's, a, it's a long story. I'm gonna make it really short. It's I'll make long. it really short and simple. We went to Juice Jam, hundreds of people there. This random lady targets my friend, co-host here, Scott, out of, I even cry, just walks up and is like talking him up, trying to get him to go to the apartment. All over it, all over it. She, she, she was down, DTF, as they say. Kept going DTF. back to her house and changing for him. She, yep. Schoolgirl outfit, cocktail dress. She she put on all that stuff. Yep. And most of you guys who are at Juice Jam saw her uh, right. stripping down on uh, Jarvis. Yep. Which was pretty funny. She said we were going to get married and that I have to come over and pick up carpeting. Mm hmm. Yep. Yeah. Got it all mapped out, man. She, yeah. she figured all that out yeah. just by looking at you from across Juice Jam. Yeah. She's like, that guy right there? That's, I'm marrying that that's guy. the guy for me. Yep. I'm going to pick up the drapes, the carpet, the yeah. dog, everything. He's coming over and we're, he's. And we're going to live a Hollywood movie. We're going to. Instantly. We're gonna, that's it. That's the guy for me. That's rules. I almost let you out of your rules. We've had two. Let's. One, we got two. <laughs> let's go one back more. to some rules. Another one. <laughs> Another one. I never. I, I. I always avoid like the plague. I hate cliches. Uh huh. I hate saying cliches. So whenever I tell a story or anything like that, I always try to avoid cliches whenever possible because I don't. I don't think it makes you sound very smart. And uh, yes. That's why I avoid cliches. Avoid cliches is a good rule. 
Um, also, because I love telling stories, I have a ton of stories, and I just got to be reminded of them. Because they get lost way down in the subconscious. There's a lot, and I forget about them. But they're in there, there's tons. The other thing is, gratuitous sound effects. I don't like gratuitous sound effects. If it's a sound, I gotta describe the sound. Like, it sounded like a uh, hammer being thrown into a pile of mud. Oh, okay. I see what you're doing. Yeah. I see what you're doing. Yep. Yeah. So instead of like, what noise does your car make? You're, you're not like, well, my car's going. Yeah, really. Yeah. Making all these noises. The guy's like, I, I don't know what that is. Yeah, it's a Three Stooges episode. Yeah. So you're just like, you know what? The wheel is grinding. <laughs> yeah. When I turn it left. Yeah. It's a grinding Much sound. Like and when I turn it, there's a loud squeak, and then a, you know, a, a, a sharp, high pitched now, would you scream like a? Would you would you just like describe the noise as if you were writing it out? Like, say you're writing something. And the the noise was like a foom. Would you tell them the noise is a foom instead of just going? No, you'd be like, no, the noise is more like a foom. <laughs> no, no. The, I the would more or less too much no, against the rule. Yeah, no. I still wouldn't. Which is a really funny rule because quite often, as you're doing things, you'll do your own sound effects. Yeah, a loud squeak and a low galunk. <laughs> Actually, I just did it there. I just did what you just said. A loud foom and a squeak and a galunk. I guess I do that. You gotta really reevaluate that. Yeah, no, I, I guess I do do that. I just don't do sound effects. Like shotgun, something or other. You know, I, don't, I, you know, I don't know. I mean, see, I can't, even, I can't even force myself to do it. That's how much I don't follow my, my rule. Or I do follow my rule. I can't, I can't even force myself to make sound effects. You got some more there? I had a friend that was in the sound effects. It was brutal. Oh, it was just... Oh, man. Just the, him doing his car accelerating was just brutal. I don't know where yeah. that story was going. <laughs> so, wait, this guy, he would he would just, he would make the noise of his yeah of his car accelerating? The light turned green, and then I'm like... And that's his... That's his story. <laughs> yeah. And then he was driving that's a Honda. Whole, that's the whole story. <laughs> and I'm like, well, I don't know, I still don't know what happened. You're just making a lot, lot of sound effects. <laughs> that wasn't me. What was am it? I up to? No, it's not you. That's not you. I think that was four. I was, it was four? I got one more? One more. See, for those of you who are wondering ah. why he's trying to come up with five, like, on the spot, Scott has a giant list of rules. I do. And uh, we'll tell you where you can find those rules uh, right after he gives you the fifth one here. You, you have them online, correct? I do. Perfect. Another one which serves me well, and that uh, every time I say it, somebody says, oh yeah, you're right, yeah, yeah. Which is, of course it happened with camera phones. When somebody gives you, uh, somebody's always given other people their phones to look at a picture. Yep. Because there's so many, everybody's taking pictures nonstop. You give the, pic, the person the, the, the phone, here you go. You look at the picture and you go, oh yeah, cool. Do not, when you're looking at the picture, start scrolling through the other ones and swiping through them all. The he, that person only wants you to see that one picture. If he wanted to see more, he would reach over and go, hang on a second. And you go, zip, and he'd swipe it himself. Or tell you to swipe left once yeah, or something. Yeah, or swipe left once or twice, and then that's it. You just don't go, oh, cool. And you start swiping through them all. You don't do that. You did sound effects again. Did I? Yeah. Did that count? No, because you weren't describing the sound effect. You just made it. Okay, good. Still follow my rule. Yeah. It's like a subsection rule. Because if you start doing that and swiping, you're going to see dick pics and other pics maybe you don't want to see. <clears throat> and maybe another person doesn't want you to see. Do you hang out with a lot of people that have dick pics on their phone? No, I'm just using that example, that's all. Don't scroll through Scott's phone if he hands it to you. No. I'm just warning you now. Actually, my, my Just look at the picture he wants you to see, that's uh, it. There's, not, there's, there's no racy pictures on the phone. I could have gotten some today. I chose not to. <laughs> because I am... 
<laughs> a respectful man that has a girlfriend that yes. I care a lot about. Now you have two. At least Apparently I got two. Hey, at least you know if if life ever gets to the point where Emily says screw you, kicks you in the nuts, and then you know you're like, you know what, my life is so down in the dumps. Yep. You always know you can go to Jarvis and Queen. Jarvis and Queen. I got a I got a hookup. Literally. It's a hookup. It is? Yeah. It's a hookup for hookups. She's got she's friends, friends too. She, she has friends. <laughs> Look, I bought friends. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I mean, the best part is her friends, friends didn't look impressed. I don't know if you need a connection when you go down to Jarvis and Queen, though. I mean, you can just stand there and you'll you'll get friends. That place is a mess. You'll find friends yourself. I mean, I love Toronto, but, but that neighborhood is a mess. You know, today I, I walked to grab a bite to eat, and uh, I saw a street person, I'll say street person, sitting on the corner by McDonald's, and this girl looked like she was about 12 years old, not, not much older than my daughter. And she looked very ragged, and she was sitting cross-legged on the curb, smoking a cigarette. That's pretty sad. That was, it was very disturbing. Very disturbing. You just you just think you're like, you know what, kid? Come with me. We need to find you. I don't know a family. Fuck, just anywhere, like something. Like, why is this kid on the street? That's at crazy. Least, at least a uh, first step towards something. Something. You have a whole life in front of you. You're you're on the street. Like, like I just can't help but think that maybe something tragic happened in your life or something. Yeah. And there's nobody to guide that well, person. Just, and it, Toronto's just walking by, yeah. sitting in front of McDonald's. How yeah, a cigarette? Something bad should could have happened. Must have happened. Eh? It's it, it was. It just makes you think a lot. It was crazy. Yeah. Speaking of uh, unfunny stories, uh, what else are we? <laughs> what else are we talking about here? What else can well, I, What else can we change the subject to? Well, we can go back to your rules. Where can you find your rules? Because I told I told everybody that we'd be able to find your rules. Well, yeah, I don't know if any. Mm, not many people know, but on my Facebook I have a link, and it's my own personal website, which is, uh, it's called Be the Man of Tomorrow. The philosophy behind the website is uh, to have, make good men become better men, and by doing by, by keeping one philosophy in mind is is every time you meet somebody or a man, there's always something you can learn from that person. And you won't know until you meet that person. And they're, they're going to say something or they're going to, they have experience with something. And they're, they'll tell you something you don't know. The website is for that purpose. It has a lot of articles on it and a lot of, well, rules that uh, I hope that not everybody knows about. And uh, some articles are, are obscure that maybe you wouldn't think of, no, of researching, but they're there to build knowledge and uh, build skills as well. Because mm -hmm. there's a lot of ones on learning new skills there. Yeah, absolutely. It's a, it's a, it's, it's a blog spot. It's a blog, so it's a, under the blog spot banner. It's be the man of tomorrow.blogspot.com or .ca. It goes in the same spot. Or you can go to my Facebook, there's a link there. Uh -huh. um, it's it's not it's not a it's not a website where I, I'm preaching to people about how I'm the greatest and everybody should be like me. Because I gotta research all this stuff too. I I think of a topic and I don't know about it. I gotta go research it first. Then I gotta go write about it, so it actually does take me a long time to put together an article that's interesting for people to read. And um, there's about probably 110 articles already up there. Already, eh? How long have you had that website up? Mm, I don't know, maybe two years, maybe. A year yeah. and a half, two years. I, I try to put up as much info as I can, a lot of information. And of course, there's Twitter and a Facebook page. Of course, there's links 
mm -hmm. on the website for that. And uh, and then there's a personal blog as well on the website you can read, which is just things that I'm personally doing. So I try to be, I try to have an all-encompassing sort of website as a resource for people to learn from. And you can see all the rules on there that I follow. But uh, yeah, that's, uh, if you're interested, I would go there. There's a lot of reading material. After two years of writing these articles, it's going to take you a while to go through them all. So check it out. It'd be great. And uh, yeah, get some traffic there on it. Mm -hmm. Maybe you'll learn something. I sure did. Maybe you'll become a man. Yes, a real man. Right. Not some child man baby. Is there a man baby? A man baby. Man baby. I don't even know what a man baby is. I think the comments on the phone are going faster than this iPad here. Well, it's just people logging in a bunch. Ah, I see. It's people logging in. We got four viewers. Yeah. Two are probably in our live studio audience. Right. right? That you yeah. hear off camera the once in a while. You better not hear them. You better not. You better not. Well. You know, when, when stuff gets funny, the live audience is live. Oh, they can laugh. Yeah, I don't mind that. That's, that's fine. Yeah. The comments, I, I really don't. Don't heckle us when we're on, when we're on TV. That's, that's the message here. Yeah. It's bad enough we get heckled in the comments. Yeah, I know. So, like, hand gestures, I don't mind. Your hand yeah, gesture doesn't me. bother me. You're like, yeah. fuck that show. It doesn't bother me. It doesn't yeah. matter. It doesn't bother me. Um... Yo, we came back into town. We went to we went out and grabbed a bite to eat tonight. We did. We, yes. Had, we went to everyone's favorite Denny's because that was uh, a suggestion from Tracy. Yeah. Sadly, so, we weren't drunk. Nope. So the food wasn't as enjoyable. When you're sober and you go to Denny's, it's not that great. That's, no, it's, yeah, it's not that Denny's. You know what? You say Denny's is like, it's not great. It's not terrible. It's not great. No. It's like, it's like some, almost it's like passable, bland. It'll stop you from being well, hungry. It'll do. It'll do. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that means, but it'll do. But uh, there's lots of great, the thing about where we went to eat, wanted to bring it up, is because there's lots of great places to go eat. Um, and, and I find sometimes too, like the best places are like the, the independent stuff that you don't know about, like yes. that that other people don't know about. Owner, owner operated. Yeah, like I mean, for me, Lakeview Burger. I love Lakeview, Lakeview Burger. We Burger, talked about that yeah. before on here. Yeah. Uh, Lakeview Burger is a big one for me. Uh, we talked about it earlier too. Uh, the Rainbow. Uh, Rainbow's good. Yeah. They're they're fantastic. Yeah. Um, how well, do you have data night? in the U.S. to stream? I'll get to that in a second. Um, but late at night? I don't know. Well, yeah, Rainbow's not open late at night. There's, you know what, that's the problem I find is like, a, there's not a lot of options late night other than yeah. fast food, like, like chains and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. Because owner-operator stuff, like they've been there all day, they want to go home, yeah. they want the evening and the weekends to themselves maybe or yeah. something. Um, but Teddy's, yeah, Teddy's, Teddy's a group, that's a staple to Oshawa. You like Teddy's? Uh, I like Teddy's. You don't like Teddy's? No, 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 I like Teddy's. I, I like Teddy's a lot. I mean, I've had a few different things there. Their, uh, their strawberry pie is amazing. Um, strawberry pie? <laughs> the strawberry pie is uncooked strawberries. It's, there's a pile of strawberries. It's just a pile of strawberries. On, on pie. Well, it's not the light. It's a, <laughs> because it's a, just a pile of strawberries on pie crust. There was no work put into that except for chopping strawberries. Here we go. Restaurant after X. That was Melanie Pringles. That's another one. But I, I like Melanie Pringles a lot. Uh, my my go to there is Forty Creek Barbecue Wing Sauce on their on their wings. They also do a Forty Creek uh, Burger as well now, where they do a stuffed burger. So they put the cheese inside the meat yes. patty. And then they base the patty in the Forty Creek barbecue That's sauce. The way to do it. Oh, it's amazing! But they have a lot of good stuff on that menu as well. <laughs> Candy says hi. 
which is it's Ohi. 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 Hi there. Uh, we were gonna go. I was gonna go back quickly to um, Kevin had a question. How did I have uh, data in the the U.S. to stream? This is an interesting one. I'm glad you brought this up because this I, this is great. What New York City is in the process still of doing, and what they have done a lot of, up and down a couple of the main streets, uh, I believe like Eighth, I think it is, and Avenues America, they took all the phone booths out, and in place of the phone booths, they have these giant stands that are free high-speed internet Wi-Fi. So essentially what you can do is you can walk up the street and have Wi-Fi all the time, the whole time you're walking outside. But the other things that they added to these booths, uh, free calling to anywhere in the world through Vonage, so VoIP through Vonage, which is awesome, so you can use a phone to call your family in Sweden or England or whatever. Uh, they also have uh, like an iPad station built into the to the display so you can go on to the map of New York City and see where you are and plan out your trip and stuff um, and they are still in the process of, of building more and more and more um, and eliminating pay phones which is an amazing feature so when I was in Times Square I was able to connect to one of those uh, one of those Wi-Fi spots and I thought you know what I'm just gonna do a live session really quickly from uh, from right from Times Square because how often do you get a chance to do that? That's what I'm saying, man. You know, and lots of people see pictures of, of Times Square and they see pictures of New York, but but to jump on and see it live while I'm there, that's 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 an awesome opportunity. Well, that's, that's what I was saying, though. That's why I said it. Eventually, it's going to be free. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's going to be free. That's something. That's something that uh, that Toronto needs to do. Um, and you know what? I wouldn't put it past them to do it very soon. Yeah. Toronto's that city that that tries very hard to be. Uh, very much alike New York, but New York is just you can't copy it. No. It's that that New York, that city is so compact and there's so much there. Toronto is there's, there's a lot of stuff, but it's it's spread. The city's very big. You you couldn't just walk the whole city. New York, I mean, you put some time in, you could you could walk it, but there's a lot to it as well. Yeah. Uh, every every everything in Canada is spread out. You know what I mean? That's it. So the, that's the people from India. I'm talking from people from they just came home from India, and that was their their impression of everything. And that everything is so spread out. You gotta go here. Oh, that's uh, 20 minutes away. Oh, where's the next uh, town? Oh, the town? Well, that's a half an hour that way. You're like, why is everything so spread out? Why are you making it get all together? <laughs> You're going in between. I love that Emily's going into great detail. I believe this is about Teddy's. <laughs> this is fantastic. Yes, if you yes. if you need a food critique, just follow along in the comments. We got a great uh, critique on Teddy's. Right. Yeah. 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 That was a bad meal. Yep. Old hacking lady. I, I feel like that has. Yeah. That was gross. You know what? That doesn't need a story. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. That was gross. That was a. Uh, Waitress with a bad cough and cold. <laughs> Seven and then it was like, people had the same cough, they go, <laughs> and then like the third or fourth time they go, <laughs> and then they choke on their own phlegm. That's what happened that one day. And, and then, and then she brought you your food. That was disgusting. Like, it was right behind us. Server. It was right behind us, like 10 feet away, so I was like, oh my god, like, it was right in my ear pretty much. And that was it, I, I couldn't, oh god, I couldn't do that, I didn't want to eat, I didn't want to eat, it was just gross. You know, I, I've actually, when you're talking about bad restaurant experiences, I've had a bad restaurant experience too, that really turned me off of a restaurant to the point I don't like going to that restaurant anymore. Okay, that's good. Cool. Um, the, uh, the East Side Mario's in North Oshawa. Okay. Uh, I went there once in a, it was a couple summers ago, I believe, and I uh, ordered dinner. And of course, I mean, with East Side, you get your, your bread and salad for, for days before you get your dinner. Um, but what happened was, we were where we were sitting, they have like a, a shelf, and it looks like all fruits and stuff like that. Right. Fruits and vegetables, like tomatoes and different stuff. 
and to give it that Italian look, that Italian feel. Yeah. And uh, what I think they did is they used real food, or if they didn't use real food, the fruit flies definitely thought it was real food. Um, Interesting. But the fruit fry, fruit fly problem was so bad that when we got our salad, I couldn't get to keep the flies away. It was constantly swatting. And then uh, they were just landing on the food. So, of course, you're watching this, and I'm like, I don't want to eat this now. Yeah, that's Because we got flies landing on it. And then they go to bring me the actual meal. And as soon as they did that, I said, you know what? Can you just... Uh, can you just pack that to go? And I told her about the fruit flies. Yep. And I said, hey, look. And I tapped the uh, the table beside me, the, the counter. And they all went flurrying up in the sky. And she's like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. I said, this is absolutely terrible. You guys should not be serving food here with this many fruit flies. Yeah, that's pretty Maybe gross. the food board came in there, whatever they're called. Yeah. They they would shut that place down because yep. it was just so bad. And that ever since then, gross. I just don't want to go to that. I mean, I'm sure they fixed the problem. I have been there since, but it was just such a terrible experience. It was yeah. it just turned me off of that place so much. I didn't have a terrible experience at this, uh, that one, but I had a funny kind of experience. I'll be quick, I'll be quick about it. But we were there one time. I ordered the standard, uh, you know, chicken and vegetable and French fries sort of dish. <laughs> so when they brought it to me, they must have you. They must have upgraded their plates. Because they had the largest, roundest plates I've ever seen in my life. They were huge, huge dinner plates. And yet the portions that they gave me were the smallest portions I've ever seen. I don't know why they would put them on such giant plates. It was like the smallest little, like, it was like a fist, like my own fist of, like, food. And the plate was humongous. It was a huge plate. I was like, I don't know what the hell's going on here. But then the, the, the quarter chicken piece they gave me, like, it was the smallest quarter. It must have been a baby chicken. It was the smallest thing I've ever seen in my life. And to put that in front of a, a man my size looked ridiculous. It's so, like an insult. The waitress put it down, and, and I looked down at it. And I was just <laughs> staring at it like that. And then she stopped and hesitated, and she goes, um, you know what? I'm going to ask the chef for something else here. I'm going to... I'm going to see if I can get you some, uh, another piece of chicken. And I was like, yeah, that's it's a pretty small piece of chicken. She's like, yeah, it's a, it's a small piece of chicken. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's a mutual I didn't even say anything. I was like, server. I said, well, if that's what I ordered. And she goes, no, no, I'm going to get you another one. That's really small. And then that's what happened. And, uh, you know, she was nice about it. But, uh, <laughs> at least it didn't have flies on it. That's true. That's so disgusting. So, uh, yeah, long story short, if anybody has a late night restaurant that's that's pretty decent food, yeah, I'd like to know about We're not talking it. McDonald's. Yeah, I'd definitely like to know about that. Like, I guess up in the north end, it works. Yeah, the works is decent. Or, you know, they got, what do they got? Wimpy's? Or, uh, what is it called? Wimpy's? No, no, it's not Wimpy's. No, Wimpy's isn't open, is it? Wally's. Wally's is up there. Oh, Wally's. That's you know what I'm thinking. I'm thinking the Wally's. Yeah. You know what I think about Wally's? I, it's almost like that independent restaurant that's very much like Denny's. Yeah, it is. Whereas the food there is like drunk food. It is It's drunk not food. great food unless you're drunk. That, that, that is, is great. Food. Yeah. See, that's what I was thinking. Tucker's big suggestion. Uh, welcome. I, Tucker must have just woke up. Uh, say cheese in Grand Island, New York. Oh, perfect. Uh, I'll, perfect. Go, I'll go there tomorrow. Next uh, next weekend when we're drunk, <laughs> we'll uh, we'll take a drive down, drive down to Grand Island, New York. Yep. And uh, and try it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, By the time everybody gets down there, we'll no longer be drunk, but you know we'll be there and trying it. What do you guys think? about the terror, uh, the TIF tax. Uh, the 3% tourist fee tax in Niagara. That's a great question. I didn't even know about this. You didn't know about this? Nope. So when you go... Please enlighten me, Jay. <laughs> well, Scott, <laughs> let me tell you about it. Uh, in Niagara on Clifton Hill and Lundy's Lane, yes. that, that tourist area, anytime you go somewhere, uh, like a restaurant or something, you get your bill, you'll see an extra 3%. It says uh, TIF. 
and it's a it's a tourist tax. Okay. And what all the establishments are doing is they're charging an extra three percent on top of the bill, and their explanation is it's a tourist tax to improve the tourist area. The problem is, is it's okay. not. It, it's tax is usually a mandatory thing. Yes. This is not. So all these companies are taxing everybody an extra 3%, but if you happen to catch it, yeah. and you say, hey, what's this 3%, they'll tell you what it is, and you can say, yeah, I'm not paying that, and they, they have to take it off. Right. So, I mean, yes. I get the improvement. Um, maybe the, the Niagara Falls, the, the, the city should maybe put some more money into improving their infrastructure. Because well, if it's at the point where an establishment is saying, hey, I need to charge an extra 3% just to improve the establishment, I, I'm not seeing where those improvements are coming in, though. So the tourist industry is, like, on the decline there? I, I don't know if it is on the decline, because they're using this as an excuse to say that they're going to improve the tourist area, but I don't know how they're improving it. Well, because if the tourist area is on the decline, then they would need money mm -hmm. to improve it. But if tourists are coming in and spending money, then it would pay for itself. So I guess it's on the decline. I don't know. Not many tourists are coming. When's the last anymore? time you've been to Niagara, man? Because it's pretty busy there all the time. Yeah, it, it's very busy. That's what I hear. And and you know what? To top it off, you can't even say the Niagara. I can tell this from experience. You can't say that Niagara has no money to put in their infrastructure. They have two casinos in the tourist area. True, yeah. A casino in a town contributes a certain percentage. I don't know what those numbers are, and even if I did, I probably couldn't tell you. Um, but they have to contribute a certain percentage of the money that's intake to the town. This so was kind of like a kickback. Hey, yeah. you, we'll, we will put a casino in your town if you want it there. And in return, we're going to give you X percentage of revenue annually. And that's, that's free money. Because yeah. people are just giving it away there. So it's free money that they can put into things. And like that stuff like OLG, like they, they put money into all kinds of programs. Yeah. So, but to give that money to the town, they have two casinos, resorts at that too. Bringing in tons of money, that money can be used to improve that tourist area. Sure can. So, uh, I guess the bottom line is I don't agree with the 3% uh, tariff that they're charging. And I, I've actually, for a couple of years now, I've always, every time I see it, I ask them to remove it right away. Because uh, I'm already going to tip you, for one, the server for helping me. Because the server's there trying to make a buck and make a living. Yep. And the pricing on X food or whatever is already inflated because of the tourist area. Yeah. So well, yeah, they're, they're making enough right money. Just for the, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Some retailers are sneaky though. Argued with him that they were charging sixteen percent in tar in Ontario, thinking he was a tourist. Ah, I get it. So, so instead of thirteen percent, they were telling their customers, "Hey, no, no, Ontario, we charge sixteen percent." I, we've never charged 16%. Nope. We were at 15 once. 15, yeah. That was the highest. But now we're at 13. Uh, that's that's crazy. Yeah. For some... Well, you got to fool the Americans, right? They, Some of them come from states that don't have any tax, and they come up here and they're like, oh, i got to pay tax. Yeah. And they have no idea yeah. how much it is. So, yeah. Very little sales tax in the states. Very little. Yeah, almost shockingly, shockingly uh, little sales tax. You tell the price, and that's basically what it is. I don't think this statement goes together. Road trip, drunken friends is the best. Yeah, it's not uh, a statement you want to put together because I mean, if I'm drunk, I don't want to go on on a road trip with a bunch of drunk friends. Yeah, it's questionable grammar as well, Glad. I'm sorry. Because one of us has to drive. And I don't want to be behind the wheel of somebody who's been drinking. Yeah, come on. Better, better think about going, getting in cars with drunk people, man. That's not good. Yeah, think about it, Glenn. Think twice, okay? I don't want to see you die. Or hear about it.
Yeah. Mm-hmm. See, it would be worse. And yeah, thanks for making this show serious. <sighs> yeah, I'm glad. Don't be like Glenn Kidd. <laughs> yeah. Episode, don't, don't episode drink and nine. drive. Episode 9, Ruin. Yeah. Don't do drugs and drive either. Unless you're really good at it. Got serious. And if you're good at something... Maybe we should talk about wars and stuff too while we're at it. Wars? Yeah. You know, kids die in wars. There's all kinds of wars going on, man. So yeah. We're gonna make this show depressing. I know. Next topic. We gotta change topics now. Thanks. Well, how, how do we have this? How do we segue? Fucking derailed the show. I'm how do we get up and turn it off now? How do we segue out of wars, man? What's well, good? how do we segue? Actually, well, you, you know, know what's what? interesting with war? They, you know what I've noticed? They uh, they filmed everything now. In war, man, every, the soldiers yeah, all have true. cameras, like that's on their true. phone and stuff. They they film. I, it's like we're in an age now where they go to war and everybody's filming it. Yes. So before it was like, hey, like Vietnam and world and the world wars and stuff like that. You would just have to read about it in the newspaper, whether that country wanted to shove down your throat. Whether it was good or bad, whatever. Um, but now it's like, hey, see for yourself. Yeah. <clears throat> there's yeah. no there's no gray area anymore. It's just like here it is on film. Yeah, I mean YouTube. And you, you can see all those videos. Like there's there's yeah. tons of that stuff. Oh my god, YouTube. Yeah, YouTube does have a ton of those war videos. You can see pretty much everything. People getting disintegrated and run over was, by Have tanks. you seen a video of somebody getting disintegrated? That's crazy. Yes, I have. I mean, disintegrated. Wow. Well, yeah. Is there any other good videos you've seen lately? Uh, of people not being the same period? Yeah, no, it doesn't have to be a war topic. But we're just, not, now that I'm thinking about, like, so watching videos YouTube, online. YouTube, I always find something on YouTube. And then I have to find all other videos related to that thing on YouTube. And basically watch everything. Then go research it. And then go watch more videos on it. And, uh, so... It's called going down the rabbit hole, basically. It's, you go down the rabbit hole, you're, you're looking for everything on that topic. So what it was the other day was uh, I looked up the All Blacks rugby team from New Zealand doing their war dance before a game called the Haka. Okay. And... Uh, it was, uh, the video was like the first time they were doing a new haka. And, uh, so after that I had to look up all of them. So New Zealand has one, the New Zealand team. Mm -hmm. The Samoan team has one. There's a team from Tonga that has another one. And they're all different. I had to find them all. And then I had to find other sports from New Zealand doing the haka dance. The most fascinating one was the New Zealand hockey team. They do a dance? They do the Is same haka that's on ice. In skates, <laughs> doing the dance. It's all on YouTube. They have a collection of them of all different sports teams from New Zealand doing the same haka. And uh, it's fascinating, absolutely fascinating. That is, that's they get right into it too, man. They're screaming and yelling and sticking out their tongues and like throat slashing motions and everything. Like they're 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 gonna kill people. Violence. It's they're gonna it's soccer. Yeah, they're, they're gonna kill people. There's a couple where they had like uh, they had like traditional like New Zealand Maori chiefs come out. They're all dressed up. They got spears and junk too. They're doing the haka with the players. Oh man, it's crazy stuff. Huh. Yeah, they go they go nuts. But I mean, there's a ton of videos on it. That's all I've been doing. You should uh, maybe it's boring to some people, but for me, uh, I, you know what? I enjoyed it. No, it's pretty cool. You know what? I think what we should do is uh, is maybe after the show, we'll throw a link up. Throw a link I'll put them yeah. on the Ultimate Gravity page, on the Optic Gravity Show page. We'll we'll throw a link up, and then uh, if anybody else has interesting videos and anything to do, start throwing them up on the page. Sure, that's great. That's great I'll material. Put up, uh, I'll put up a video of uh, of the Haka, one of the one of the one of the videos I saw. It was pretty. It was pretty cool. 
Yeah, I uh, enjoyed it. We had a couple of comments here. Kevin watched the uh, movie War Dogs. I haven't seen that. Average soldier carries sixteen thousand dollars worth of gear. That's I, a lot. I can believe that. Yeah, I can believe that. Well, yeah. there's some of that high tech equipment. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, I imagine some yeah, of those infrared goggles, laser sights. I mean, I mean that's an sure. average number. I'm sure there's soldiers out there that carry a million dollars worth of equipment on them. Probably. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah I mean those. Those, uh, those little, uh, what am I looking for? Those night, those night sight goggles, right? Attached to your helmet. Night vision goggles? Night vision goggles. You know what's funny? They they get those really expensive goggles, and uh, I don't know if it's just Hollywood, but they always complain about, uh, they don't have, uh, they get a short supply of batteries to keep them going. Do they require batteries? Yeah, they, they, they have the night vision goggles, the single or double. And uh, they have to conserve batteries because they use batteries. To, they're, they don't plug into anything. You'd think you'd carry some spares or just have it fully charged or something before you go to war. Or plugged into something on your pack or something. Yeah, of course. Yeah. 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 So, uh, you're going to you're going to war, I mean. So if the American, like American Army. Army five bullets. Or you just, <laughs> I forgot all my bullets. That, that was, you know what, that stuff happened in like World War II, man. They yeah. would get to places and they only had like a very few bullets. And they have to like share their ammo and stuff like that, and they'd be ammo drops would get accidentally dropped on the wrong side of the line yeah. and stuff like that. That's craziness. Is that the Russians you're talking about? No, Americans too. Americans, yeah. Americans too. Uh, you ever watch? Did you ever watch Band of Brothers? Uh, I've seen a couple episodes. Yeah, it's a great a episodes. Great series. Um, it's all, it's all like uh, loosely based on true stories and stuff. It's great because they have uh, the the 101st Easy Company, Airway. Right. Easy Company, yeah. They, that's, the show is centered on Easy Company, and uh, they actually have the soldiers at the start of each episode that were actually in Easy Company, kind of giving a, like a precursor to the episode and stuff, and right. you get to see all the stuff they went through, and that was one of the episodes where they were pinned down in the winter, uh, being shelled by the Germans like the trees exploding stuff, and they had very limited ammo. I had to go through and find all this ammo and stuff. Hmm. Um, now, Easy Company is a famous company, yeah. Very famous, yeah, yeah 101st Airborne. 101st, they're still around. Yep, 101st Airborne is still around, they're pretty uh, hardcore. But if, you, if you're if you into military and history, military history stuff, check out Band of Brothers. I mean, it's been around for 14, 15 years that show was aired, but it still stands up as a really good series. Uh, another question here. Do we think Miley Cyrus, that's what Miley, Miley Cyrus is playing Batgirl in an upcoming DC movie apparently? Do you think that's gonna, do you think that's gonna destroy the image of DC movies? You know what, I, uh, geez, I don't know. I don't have a problem with it. Could we do any worse than you can't base a music career off of an acting career, like, and vice versa type thing. Like, if Miley Cyrus is cast as Batgirl, she could do an amazing job. You know what? And who cares? Here's the Give problem. her a chance. Here's the problem. Everybody knows who Miley Cyrus is. Yep. She's a little girl, and I guarantee you, playing Batgirl, she's going to have to go up against some big thugs, and she's going to do fancy kicks and spinning back fists. Yep and beat the crap out of these guys, which is completely impossible. And um, that's what's going to happen, and I'm going to hate watching it. Because you're all going to think, this is Miley Cyrus. She could hit she could hit me as hard as she could, and wouldn't do anything. It would be like watching Ryan Reynolds be Green Lantern. What does that even mean? I can't stand that. <laughs> Well, you know, just is, your, is your argument that Ryan Reynolds doesn't possess magical powers and therefore is a bad Green Lantern? He's a terrible Green Lantern. In what way? In what way is he a terrible Green Lantern? You know, the whole time I watch Green okay, Lantern, we're we going to pick this movie apart. Yeah? When I watch Green Lantern, the whole time I'm watching, I was not seeing um, Green Lantern. I was not seeing Hal Jordan. Okay. In fact, I wasn't even seeing Ryan Reynolds as Green Lantern. The only thing I kept thinking about, this is Van Wilder. Right. It was Van Wilder as the Green Lantern. Yeah. Which is a terrible combination. Then to top it off, 
to make things even better, they stick him up against an intergalactic entity. On his right. first day as Green Lantern, yeah. an entity comes over the whole planet. The whole planet that houses the entire DC universe. Yep. And they all said, screw it, let the one day old Green Lantern handle it. Green Lantern can take care of it. That new guy, Green Lantern, he can handle that space entity. Why not? We're not going to let anybody else handle that. Well, we're, we're, there's, it's not like there's a whole Justice League on the planet. We're some Superman, I don't know, where was he at the time? He was having dinner with Lois, probably. Yeah. Batman's hand, hiding out in his cave. Well, Batman can't do anything. Why That's, are we even talking about this? <laughs> This is a ridiculous conversation. All I'm saying is, <laughs> it's Miley Cyrus as Batgirl. She's a tiny little girl, and so I guess, I'm telling you right now, she's going to be beating the crap of 200 pound men yep. in this movie. Yep. And it's going to be ridiculous. Dude, she's, they'll she's, do the uh, she'll do the gonna, kick and then they'll overreact with the fall. Or she's going to jump and do a big <laughs> spin kick, and the guy's going to fly through a wall. And she's gonna kick. She's gonna get a fight with four guys at once, and she's gonna destroy them all. And uh, I, it's gonna be ridiculous. No, it's, it's Miley Cyrus. She's a skinny little girl. So there, there's the consensus. He thinks it's gonna be terrible. I was saying, give it a shot. We'll see what happens. Uh, we get some work on Hi from BC, Amy. Hi back at you. Really disappointed we didn't get to see you while you were here. Well, how long uh, was she here for? She was here for six days. Oh, wow. But, in her defense, uh, she was helping pack her family, and her parents uh, moved out to BC with her, which is really awesome. It'd be awesome if my mom moved here. Um, are those the two new juices? Yes, right up front. Two new juices. Aries and Glamazon. Ew, ew. And... Sure. One of my supervisors wants to know, is the casino moving from Ajax? No. No? Not as far as I know. Um, Deadpool's good? Yeah, yeah. yeah, Deadpool, I mean, I guess... Deadpool yeah, Ryan Reynolds, I mean... He, he plays a much better Deadpool than he did Green Lantern. Yeah, that's it. His, uh, his uh, movie roles are... His characters are, are the best when he's playing uh, wisecracking smartasses. Yeah, much better suited for Deadpool. So that's basically what Deadpool was, and uh, Ryan Reynolds played it to a T. My uh, my problem with Deadpool, yes. Colossus. Yeah, Colossus. He didn't look that great. He looked like he was, was his, sh sh his shoulders were in like that. Yeah, it was terrible. Every time he was walking, <laughs> it's just scrunched up. Yeah. I mean, I, I enjoyed the the, the voice. And the fact they had Colossus in there was it the same guy who played Colossus in the other movies? No, it was it was completely digital. CGI, totally. Totally CGI. Totally. 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 It's bad. Yeah. Bad. <laughs> uh, any other questions on there? We only got. Let's see here. We got only like about two or three more minutes left because uh, we don't like to get cut off. Come on, rapid fire! Rapid fire, people! Come on. What kind of questions is this? Who would be a better Green Lantern? Tyrese Gibson or The Rock? Uh, I don't think The Rock would play a good Green Lantern at all. Tyrese Gibson? I guess, who would he play? I guess uh, John Stewart? Yeah, Tyrese Gibson is more urban, I guess. You know, but I was, if I was going to cast a, uh, a John Stewart Green Lantern, I would, I would use Diggle from Arrow. Did you watch Arrow? I know the guy's talking about, yeah. The guy from uh, Arrow, his, his, his name is John Diggle, and the best way that I could work that in for them is if they wanted to turn him into a Green Lantern, as John Stewart, uh, have, it, have it find out that his middle name maybe was Diggle, and his last name was actually Stewart. So it was John Diggle Stewart, okay? And then therefore John Stewart Green Lantern. So he's the only guy on that show. Well, <coughs> oh, pardon me. Uh, he's the only guy on that show that's not like, uh, like the comic book hero. He's just the uh, the extra bodyguard guy with the gun. Yeah. And they gave him a helmet to try to fit in. Did they? Yeah. Yeah. He's got this weird helmet with the eyepiece visors that you can see through. 
But uh, that's a good show. That's gonna be picking up soon, actually. Flash and Arrow. They're gonna they're gonna go do the whole Flashpoint thing, which is great. The uh, the Flashpoint, basically, what they did on Flash uh, at the end of the season. If you didn't see it, I won't spoil it. What they did on Flash um, is going to affect the rest of the DC universe on the CW network. Okay. Which is really cool. So anything that's changed on Flash. Arrow is now going to have a completely new background, new setup and everything, all as a result of what happened on the Flash show. Really ingenious on the way that they uh, get you to watch both shows instead of one. It's yeah. really smart, which I really enjoy. Yeah, Kevin says we're going to get cut. Yeah, we, they, we got cut on, I think, the first episode at about a minute nine, so we like to cut it at around an hour. Yeah, but I, I don't know if we actually did get cut off or your phone just... Like the signal got cut off, so. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. An hour, an hour is a good time anyway to end the show, right? Yeah, it's, I guess. I mean, what's well, the target hour? We do the yeah. we, target hour is good. I mean, the hour goes pretty fast, so. We only did uh, about twenty five minutes this afternoon, but that's okay because it was a live special yeah. uh, an event. Yeah. Uh, actually, we're doing another event next weekend. Oh, we'll be sick weekend. rides for sick kids. Oh, right on, yeah. September fourth, we will be there. We've pumped it a few times. It's all down to crunch right now. I got a lot of stuff going on to help get ready for that. Um, but we will definitely do an episode from there. So if you want to come be a part of that live uh, taping, come on down to sick rides. Today, uh, just everybody was right into it. Yeah, talking to people on the street, people were dancing behind us, all that stuff. <laughs> They were loving it. Yeah. They're like, "Hey, uh, can we yeah. can we get in on the selfie picture? Uh, we're not taking a selfie. This is live. Oh, you're live? That's yeah. amazing. So yeah, yeah, come on down and do that, and uh, we'll take the live show. And if we're bored, we'll beat up John Cena. That's the way we do it. Sure, I guess. Anything else you want to touch on before we I go? I know the inside joke about beating up John Cena. So okay, we won't get to it. I'm pretty hard. lost. John Cena already got beat up. We won't talk about it. Alright, he's getting beat up. I don't know. What, I don't know what's happening here. It's fun. It's fun. Yeah, I don't know, man. Yeah. Uh, we, we got through an hour of stuff, man. I don't get it. We uh, we didn't talk much about... Well, we talked a little bit about comic movies. Uh, we didn't get to comic books. Do you have any uh, recommendation for a, a book, comic book slash book before we go? Let's go with books. Books? Good. We hit comic books last week. Yeah. Uh, two, actually they're pretty different, one is, uh, one is called 100 Deadly Skills, and it's, it's by, uh, a guy named Clint Emerson, and Clint Emerson is a former, uh, special ops, uh, soldier in the U.S. Army, he wrote a book about, like, urban combat, surviving in a war zone, and his book is <coughs> literally a hundred skills, uh, all about uh, making uh, makeshift body armor, uh, makeshift weapons, uh, tactical driving, uh, all kinds of stuff. And, uh, and he covers everything, and it's great. And yeah, he has, uh, he has the background behind the skill, then he has diagrams, and then the explanation of the skill and how to do it after that. And uh, that one's awesome. Uh, really good book. You, uh, you, you learn a lot in case, uh, in case the world goes to crap. And uh, you pick up that book and you can make your own body armor out of phone books and tiles. That's the end result? Basically, yes. Body armor is is uh, phone books and uh, I want to read that book now. ceramic tiles. I want to read that book. Guys, start, Very cool. start handing me your phone books. Yep. I'm going to make body armor. And ceramic tiles. Uh, the other one is an old classic uh, that I started reading, which is called 1984 by um, George Orwell. Yes, I've heard <clears> it. <throat> you have read it? I haven't read it. I do know of it. George, yeah, 1984, it's about uh, the world, it's set in 1984, but in a uh, alternate world, mm -hmm. where the government has gone completely tyrannical, and they control every single thing of a person's life, 
and uh, the people just cannot do anything without the government say, without the government, without the government say so. And um, basically, a lot of people work for the government, and uh, it follows a couple guys. Uh, well, it follows one guy in particular who works for the government, mm -hmm. and. Uh, He's had a, an awakening where he wants the government to be uh, destroyed, and he's, that's what he's going to try to do. Because uh, you know the world, or the country, wherever they live is, you know, they can't do anything. People are getting killed just for saying that they don't like the government. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's uh, it's a fantasy, but it's also it sounds like a premise behind like uh, that movie Equilibrium. Yeah, equilibrium. It's the thing is, it's it's a fantasy, but a, but George Orwell was a really smart guy, and he used the example of current governments, and he thought what would happen if this current government started doing more of what they're currently doing? How could the government go like to the far extreme, or what would it look like? Mm -hmm. So, the the cool thing about the book is that current governments in the world say like Venezuela. You can read that book and then go look what's happening in Venezuela and it's the same thing. Uh, so he, he's a smart guy and he thought about it. And uh, yeah, you, you can read the book and then you could uh, you can apply it to what's happening in other countries, say like communist countries. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's fantastic, really a great book. Um, I will go polar opposite with my, my, uh, recommendation. Recommendation. You Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Kevin Smith. Tough shit. Life advice. Fantastic book. Tells a whole bunch of stories. Keeps you actually in stitches while you're laughing. And tells some actual serious stories as well. Um, that are actually really moving. Um, he's got a series of books. It's not the first one, but grab that one. Uh, Tough Shit by Kevin Smith. Uh, I think we will cut it right yeah. there. That's good. We yeah. got some books for you to read. Hurry up and read them because we're going to do another episode yeah, probably right. before you're done. We need book reports. That's right. Write a book report and stick it on the Ultimate that's Gravity right. Show page. All right, folks. That's it for us tonight. Yeah. And we'll see you. Uh, we'll do another episode soon. Shouldn't be too long. Yeah, a day or two. Day or two. Yeah, something like that. We'll let you know. All right. That's it. That's a wrap. Kirk out. Put your finger down, director, on the bottom oh, right, right, there's right. a finish button. Look at